Ah, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, class. Good afternoon. Thank you for attending our laboratory. So, for our meeting this afternoon, other evening, um, we're just gonna discuss your module three, which attack, uh, which will tackle your smear preparation. So, if you recall, in the previous topic, we discussed your microscopy and the arrangement of your um, bacteria. So, prior to viewing viewing your bacteria class, you would have to first make a smear now before we proceed to the smear preparation itself i want you i want to discuss with you what we call your aseptic technique now your aseptic technique class would refer to a procedure that is performed under sterile conditions now um, usually class uh, in in your microbiology Remember, you are dealing with a lot of microorganisms. And what you're trying to find here would be specific ones. So you do not want contaminants being present. Contaminants being present in your sample. So your aseptic technique usually includes medical and laboratory techniques which deals with cultures, human cells, and tissue for trans transplantation. So the aim of your aseptic technique class would be to prevent the access of microorganisms during the preparation and testing. So when you say the access of microorganisms, this would refer to your contamination. You don't want contamination going to your media, going to your smear, going to your sample, and so on. That would lead to erroneous results. Now, in your microbiology lab, you would use your aseptic technique to prevent contamination of the specific microorganism we are working with as well as to prevent the contamination of the room and the personnel with the microorganism we are working with. So this second statement class would basically mean that you do not want to get sick or infected. So that's one way why we do your aseptic technique. The other one would be to prevent your contamination. Now, sources of contamination usually includes the atmosphere, the breath, the hands, coating, the hair, working surface, and equipment. So, my question ako dito, class, um, in regards to the atmosphere. But before I ask that, I'd like to share something to you. Um, nung college ako, there was a certain school in Manila wherein they had their thesis. Now, in their thesis, or rather in their research, um, their methodology was... Um, they wanted to isolate bacteria by air swabbing. So when you say air swabbing, imagine you're in a room, you get a swab, and you just, just swab the air. Now, um, in your opinion, class, here's the question. In your opinion, could you isolate bacteria if you just perform air swabbing? No, sir. Why? Can you tell me? Ms. Jabel, what's the reason why no? Um, sa ako lang, sir. Mm -hmm. um, sa visualization ko lang. Um, because swabbing sa air. Uh, ano lang swabbing sa air? You just flail around, ano, sir? Look, uh... Ganun <laughs> lang talaga. Ganun lang. Mm -hmm. So, uh, malabo, no? 
Is that your answer? Impossible. Yes. Uh, how about the rest? Does someone raise his or her hand? Um, for me, sir, though ka impossible man sina, since my, there's a lot of microorganisms that can be found sa air, then ano to ko no, kay ma air swabbing ka, then tanan sila. Like, something like that. Mm, okay, good. Um, and here's another follow up question, class, to help you answer, to help you get a better understanding. How does bacteria, or rather, what does bacteria need to infect people? Or rather, for them to be transmitted, what do they need, class? A vector, sir, a host. Okay, they could need a vector, they could need a host, what else? Fomite, they would sir. need anana, what, sorry? Fomite. Kumag Fomite, yes, with it. Mm -hmm. So your fomites could be dust, tama, no? dust. Um, they need something, basically class, to, to simplify this, they need something to adhere on. So in the air ba class, here's a question, in the air of a certain room, is dust suspended in the air or is it below? Rather, um, what's the word for this? Uh, suspended means nakalutang in Tagalog. Below would mean um, settled. Is your dust suspended in the air or is your dust settled below? What's the answer? Settled, sir. Settled, diba? Kasi they have a big weight, big molecular weight. So again, here's the question. So is it possible to get uh, air swabbing, bacteria from air swabbing, malabo, di ba? Kasi they, the bacteria doesn't have anything to adhere on. So, the problem with this study kasi class, nung, nung, nung dumating kasi, it reached the level wherein they had to defend it. So, when they reached the defense part, nagtataka yung panel. The panelists were actually curious, how did that study pass through the advisor? So sadly, uh, the, the the panelists didn't um, didn't what they call this didn't uh, pass them. They had to repeat and change their methodology because it's impossible for you to to actually get a bacteria via air swabbing unless you're in a very let's say secure very dusty room uh, where in uh, there's a a, ch a big chance of um, suspended up. Uh, a large amount of suspended particles where your bacteria could adhere. Okay, um, here's another question, class. Um, the breath. How would your bacteria uh, contaminate your specimen if, if it's via the, via the breath, class? What's the... Uh, so what? Sorry? Through aerosol. Aerosol, aerosol what? Sir. Yes, aerosol what? Droplets. All right, through aerosol droplets. Very good. So here's an example, class. So your bacteria would adhere to these droplets. Bacteria, fungi, virus, they would adhere that and they could cause cold contamination. So the hands, the clothing, the hair, the working surface, and even the equipment. So if you want to avoid um, contamination from this, you need to sterilize them. So I'll discuss that sterilization in another module. Okay, so yes, uh, Anne, you're raising your hand. I have a question, sir. Sa swabbing, to bala nga example. Oh, okay. What about viruses, sir? Pwede man map Is it possible to kill them through air swabbing? Uh, no, you can't. Uh, Kay, you, you, you can't. There's a market lately for selling those devices to kill supposedly to prevent covid in the area mga are, are you talking about the ano the yung necklace na filter miss an 
Yes, sir. May araman dan, sir. Aside from the necklace, may araman sang do do air swabbing. Do nagas do do fumes man bala, sir. Not ions. Ah, so you're talking about the uh the one that's emitting ions, yung parang ultraviolet rays. At the ions, sir. Ang do swabbing air do air man bala, sir. Naga purify. Ah, air purifier. Okay, you're talking about the air purifier. Okay. When you talk about air purifier, Miss Anne, they have what you call a filter. Now, this filter would tend to have, uh, let's say, if I recall, yung pinaka-known filter na alam ko na ginagamit ngayon na binibenta is your HEPA filter. So, this will be discussed in your lecture. Yung HEPA filter nyo can filter organisms from less than 0.01 micrometers. So, technically, Miss Anne, it doesn't kill the virus or the bacteria, but it would somehow contain them. It wouldn't kill them, but it would contain them, making the air clean. Does that answer your question, Miss Anne? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, regarding pala dun sa necklace class, who, who, who bought that necklace? Yung parang... Ako, sir. May ara. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. And then, there's uh, my device, man, sir. Nga do mini portable aircon, bala. That's mm -hmm. nga may HEPA filter, man. Okay. Uh, here's my advice. If you're gonna buy those... Uh, actually, yung regard... Uh, I'll just focus first on the necklace part. Yung necklace part class, uh, there was a study that it isn't true hindi siya totoo na it really protects you from from contaminated air. Uh, I'll, I'll try to look for that uh, journal na nakita ko. Then, if you're gonna buy any type of air purifier, check, always check the type of filter they're using. Either you buy a HEPA filter or an ULPA filter. Ultra something, I forgot the name of this ULPA. Ultra something, ultra light particle something. I forgot, I'm sorry. So it's either you look for the words HEPA or ULPA filter if you're gonna buy any type of air purifier. Huh? So, ayun. Yung sa necklace, um, yun nga, sabi nga, hindi nga daw totoo yun. Even some of my coworkers bought that before. Nung nalaman nilang hindi totoo, parang na-disappoint sila. Any more questions, class? Ito yung fa face shield ba, yes, sir? <laughs> okay. Sige, <laughs> let's talk about your face shield. Let's talk about your face shield. Now, imagine if this is the person's face. This is the per okay. Burahin ko para malinis. So, imagine this would be the face shield. Um, there was a theory kasi class wherein kapag mahangin, kapag mahangin na, the, 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 imagine the, the spread of the air, yung hangin pa ganito. Now, when you're talking with someone, tatama siya dito sa patient, the aerosols would then go sideways. What happens pag pumunta ng sideways? Masulod sa dalong pag sa babaw. Yes, tatama pa rin sa ano, di ba? Sa gilid. Oo, sa face. Oh. Sa face pa rin ang tao. So, uh, in, in, in a retrospective kasi class sa Pilipinas, face shield. This is an honest, ano ha? Kasi I have a friend. Um, the reason, naalala nyo nung, nung start ng pandemic, how, how much was your face shield? Ano yung, rather, how much, uh, how much was the most expensive face shield you bought? 400 sa middle sa <laughs> pandemic. Grabe, 400. <laughs> what type of face shield is that? May, may UV protection ba yung face shield na yan? Grabe, 400. Okay. Class, um, during kasi the pandemic, what the Chinese did, what the Chinese did was that they held or hold the stocks of your face shield. Hinord, uh, mali yung word there. It should be hoard. Hinord nila yung face shields para tumaas. Kaya dati ang price ng face shield would go as high as 50 pesos. Minsan pa nga, umabot ng 75. Pero ngayon, I think, nasa 10 pesos na lang ata. Nasa 5 piso na lang ang face shield. So, in the Philippines kasi, in an honest opinion class, your face shield is a type of business na. 
Kaya hindi na nila matanggal-tanggal. Kaya if you notice, parang tayo lang ata ang bansa na nagre-require na may face shield. Do you, do you know any countries that require face shield? Wala, sir. Wala, di ba? I think tayo lang ata ang nagre-require. So it's a... They, they treat it as a form of business. Not, you know... But it does uh, have a sense of protection, actually, class. Meron pa rin siyang protection, but siguro if you're face-to-face talaga, as in harap na harap kayo, pero kung yung mag-face shield ka na naglalakad ka, wala ka namang kausap, there's no possibility of droplets getting onto you. Hindi siya kailangan eh. But yun niya, in, in the Philippines, it's a form of business. So, yes, Jobel, you have a question? Bali, very small lang iya nga effect, sir. Yes, it's a very small effect depending on the situation. If you're facing a person, facing a person very close, and then you're talking, we're in droplets could um could reach you. Effective siya. But let's say if you're required, katulad ng nire-require ng government natin na pag maglalakad kayo sa mall, pupunta kayo sa ano, kailangan naka-face shield kayo. Uh, in, an, in my honest opinion class and based on what I know, it's totally useless for me. Ah. Yun. Any more questions? All right, so let's proceed. So your sterilization class is, is the process by which your article, surface, or medium is made free from all microorganisms, either in the vegetative or the spore state. While your disinfection class is the process by which an article, surface, or medium is made free from all pathogenic microorganisms. This would refer to your organisms capable of giving rise to infection. While your antisepsis is in the process by which the growth of bacteria is inhibited, but they are not killed. So sabi dito, pag sterilization daw class, all your microorganisms are killed. While well, for your disinfection, only the pathogenic ones are killed. Kaya if you notice, class, one of the disinfectant or antiseptic would be your alcohol. Now, as you know, your hands have normal flora. And they recommend your alcohol for killing or for, for disinfecting. But it does not technically kill the normal flora. na nagets niya class. Well, your antisepsis is the process by which the growth of bacteria is inhibited, but they are not killed. Any questions? Yes? Sir, ano gani ang reason behind bala, sir, nga man, 70% alcohol ang much preferred kaysa sa 99%? Okay, we have what you call a threshold threshold effect. Now, certain chemicals, certain chemicals would be effective at a certain would be effective at a certain concentration. Now, based on what I know, kasi tinanong yan dati. <laughs> Kapag daw um, 70% alcohol class, they have a higher chance of penetrating penetrating the bacteria compared to your 99 or 90, 99% ethanol. Kaya sabi nila, that's why 70% um, class is considered the best percentage for disinfect disinfection. Or anti ano. Then for your sunrocks class, if you recall, if you know, what's the best concentration of your sunrocks? 10%. 10%. So you hypochlorite. So yun yung considered nila na best concentration or threshold effect to kill your microorganisms. Uh, I don't know the exact uh, specifics eh, kasi meron pa yung 
meron pa yung mga molecular something na hindi ko na ano. Ayun. That, that's the best answer I can give you in in a simpler form. Any more questions? Okay. What needs to be sterilized in the process of a septic technique? You would be um, sterilizing your culture media, fluids used in the lab, reagents, lab containers, and lab equipment. So here's the general principle class of your aseptic technique. So you're going to disinfect the work area before starting to reduce potential contaminants on the bench top and after work is finished to protect others from possible contamination. So here's my question class. Um, what equipment would you be using a lot in your microbiology as your work area? What equipment would you be using a lot as your work area in microbiology? Eager plate, sir. Uh, I'm talking about the work area, Ms. La Ms. Jabel. Yes, you'll be using your plates a lot, but I'm talking about the work area. What do you call that work area? That is also an equipment. Biosafety cabinet. Sir. All right. So it's your biosafety cabinet or your BSC. Now, your BSC class would look like this. Para talaga siyang cabinet. Actually, nakakita naman na kayo ng ganito. Then there would usually be a, a glass here. This would be your glass. This would be the, the surface. Then this would be the... the what they call this, the sides, so on. So yung glass class, pwede nyong galawin yan, baba, taas, depending on that. So I just want to share something to you. Whenever you're gonna start cleaning or disinfecting, you would start from cleanest to your dirtiest. Rather, clean to dirty. So here's my question to you. Sa aling part, which part of the biosafety cabinet would you consider the cleanest? Is it the glass? Is it the sides? Or is it the surface? Sides, sir. Sides. No. Glass. Okay, it's your glass. And what's the dirtiest? Surface. 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 Normally, class, when you're working in the future, pag nag-handle na kayo sa biosafety cabinet nyo, nandito kayo lagi mag-work sa central area. So the first thing you need to clean would be the glass. After the glass, you're gonna clean the sides. Then after that, you're gonna clean the dirtiest. Okay, here's another question. What happens if you start at the surface instead of the glass? Binaliktad mo, you did the opposite. You started from the from the surface, which is the dirtiest, then you proceed to the sides, then to the glass. What happens, glass? You would spread the bacteria or the germs from the surface to the sides and to the glass. That's the reason why you always have to clean in a... Uh, unidirectional manner from cleanest to dirtiest. Okay, here's another question, class. Imagine this would be the surface. How would you clean the surface, class? In what direction? Would you clean like this? Would you clean like that? How would you clean your surface? Circular, sir. Try. <laughs> Side to side, sir. Side to side. So, panong side? One direction. So, what? Panong one direction? Is it horizontal or is it vertical? Horizontal, sir. Horizontal. So, where would you stop? Where, where would you start? Sa harap o sa likod? So, imagine this would be your surface. So, imagine la mesa yan. Saan ka magsisimula? Sa likod, sa pinaka-back, which is here, or dito ka sa pinaka-harap? Front. Back. 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 
back then. So you, you'll be cleaning it like this. One direction lang, class. Always one direction. Pag ganun. Papunta lahat sa isang side. Or if gusto mo, pwede rin pag ganyan. What's the reason, class? Bakit you have to do it in a one direction? Tingin nyo. So that hindi magbalik-balik ang, okay. ang bacteria, sir. All right, very good. So you don't want um, repetitive uh, spreading of your bacteria. Imagine mo, pag ganyan ka ba naman maglinis ng biosafety cabin ito. Let's say, let's say sobrang dumi ng, ng part na to. Let's say lang, let's say that this part would be the dirtiest or may spillage na nangyari dito. Then nilinis mo ng ganyan. Di kumalat naman dito sa, kumalat sa other areas yung ano. So you have to clean it in a unidirectional pattern. Any more questions, class? Okay, let's proceed. So... One of the sterilization techniques class that you'd be using is because um, in your microbiology, in your making a smear, you would be using what we call your inoculating loop and inoculating needle. So to sterilize your inoculating loop or needle, you're going to flame it. You're going to flame your inoculating loop before and after making a transfer of bacteria from one container to another or in making a smear. Never ever class, wag niyong gagawin na ilalagay niyo yung inoculating loop sa surface ng bench top or ng biosafety cabinet if you're, if you're not sure if it has been flamed first. Excuse me. So when you're in doubt, um, you can just reflame the loop again. Initin niyo lang. So let's say you're the type of person na obsessive-compulsive, may OC ka. Kala mo, nagdududa ka sa dami ng specimen mo sa by safety cabinet, dami mong ginagawa. Let's say meron kang mga 10, 10 specimens, 10 tubes na you have to make a smear. Then you're not sure, you're not sure na you've already flamed the, the loop or the needle, you can just reflame it. Um, ang problem lang kasi if you do that, uh, mas uh, time time consuming yun. It's more time consuming. But then again, it's better than causing what we call cross contamination. So you don't want your bacteria from tube 1 going to tube 2, your bacteria from tube 2 going to tube 3 and so on. So you're going to flame your inoculating loop or needle. Yes, Edward. May bacteria, sir, na hindi mapatay through heat. Um, all bacteria can be. Uh, no. Um, there's what we call a thermo. What was that? No, resist, resistible. <laughs> I forgot the exact name of that bacteria. It was. Uh, I think it was Mycobacterium thermoresistible, but. It was only capable of surviving until, if I recall, 56 degrees. So when you're flaming, kasi, this would exceed 100 degrees. I don't know. I don't know the exact temperature of your flame, but most bacteria are killed when you flame the loop. Later, I'll I'll tell you how long how long you would flame it to thoroughly kill the bacteria. Meron kasi kayong kailangan. You need to see something to to as a confirmation that your your uh, uh your loop or your inoculating loop is properly uh sterile. Okay. Ah uh, uh, yes, Miss. Uh... Um, pila sir ka minutes sir mag flame pa loop? Okay, later I'll I'll show it to you. In in these minutes, you just have to see something. Mama, uh, just for okay, a so after you flame your loop class, you're now going to flame your um, specimen container or your media. So your media could come in agar plates or in tubes. So when you're using tubes class, you have to always, whether you're using plates or tubes, you always have to flame the opening. 
Now, the reason for that class would be because your opening is the one most susceptible to contamination. Siya kasi yung pinaka-open. Eh. And to, to avoid your contaminations or to kill any possible contaminant, you're just, you're gonna flame the opening. It doesn't have to be too long class. It just takes you grow mga one to two seconds in flaming the opening. Then, after you flame, you can get the bacteria na, then transfer it. Questions? Okay. Then, if you're gonna open, let's say you're going to use a, a sample coming from a liquid media, specifically from your tube, do not place the cap on the surface. So what you're gonna do, class, is you're just you're just gonna find a way to put it in your hand. Later, I'll show that to you, kumpala. Then once you've ano na, once you've flamed the container, the opening, you get your sample. Try to work quickly and efficiently to minimize the uh, the culture or the sample being exposed to the environment. So here's an example of a typical transfer class. So what you're going to do is flame your inoculating loop, flame the mouth, remove the bacteria, then flame the mouth again of the tube, and transfer it. I'll show you a better example on this uh, on the future slides. So let's proceed now to your bacterial smear. So most bacteria class, as you know, have no color. They generate little contrast in the microscope field. So to further um, visualize them, you would require staining. Now, normally class, uh, in, in situations, you don't just get a sample. Let's say you get a sample, then you're just going to place it in the slide and view it in the microscope. No, it's not like that. You need to co make a what you call... Uh, you need to make a bacterial smear before you stain it. Now, your smearing class is a technique that involves the placement of a small sample on a slide. So this would be the sample. Then you would disperse it. You would disperse the sample. Then you're going to uh, heat dry, dry or heat it to fix or immobilize the cell on the surface. Now, your smearing requires attention to a number of details that help prevent contamination of the culture and ensure safety of the worker. Smearing also class kills the, um, kills the bacteria and dispersing and drying the cells enhances the uptake of the dye used in staining, while heat fixing is required to prevent cells from being washed off the slide during staining and rinsing. So kanina, you, if you notice, after placing the specimen, you would disperse it, ikakalat mo. Now the reason for that would be this would allow a uh, better, better uptake of the dye while staining and then you're going to heat fix it plus. Heat fix would allow, uh, would prevent the, the sample the smear from being washed off the slide during staining and subsequent rinsing. So this is an appearance class of your bacterial smear. So it mustn't be too thick, it mustn't be too thin, it must be just right. So let's test your memory class. How would you know if a smear is just a right, uh, at the right size or the right thickness? What would you compare it to? How would you know if your bacterial smear is just the right thickness? What item would you use to compare it to? If readable, it's just the newspaper. Okay, very good. So you're going to use a... Uh, Newspaper print. A newspaper print. So, cut kay ng newspaper class. Then you put it behind the slide. If you cannot read, 
can't read the words to tick. If you can view, if you can view the entire um, paper print, it's too thin. So to know if it's just right, um, you could, uh, what they call this, the newspaper print, the newspaper print would be slightly blurred. If you want to know if it's just right. Any questions? Maybe you're wondering, sir, does it require a specific size? Like a measurement? No. No, only for your gram stain. But when you make a smear for your acid fast bacilli, AFB, your AFB class, this is your MTB. It should be 2 centimeter by 3 centimeter. So when I say 2 centimeter by 3 centimeter, it would look like 3 centimeter length, 2 centimeter width. So sir, paano namin gagawin yun? Would it be like a box? No, you don't do it like a box. You would do it like a circular. Ganyan. But that's for AFB class. But for routine bacterial smear, there's no required measurement or size. But there is a required thickness. And you can use a newspaper print to compare that. Any questions? Okay. Now, in fixation class, there are three types of fix ways to fix or make the smear adhere to the slide. The first one would be passing it over a flame. So, sir, how long? How long would you pass it on a on a flame? Now, there's no no specific amount of time class, but it should be short. Siguro mga one to three seconds. If you don't like using seconds, you could just pass it, pass it through the flame three times. So, padadaanin niyo yung flame, one, two, three, ganun, pwede rin. One to three seconds. Using either a Bunsen burner or an electrical heater. Another method would be placing the slide in an oven. So the oven would be set at 65 to 75 degrees. Then another one would be immersing the smear in a chemical fixative known as your ethanol. So this time class, if you're going to do this, um, imagine this would be your coupling jar. Merong ethanol yan. We're just going to put this, dip the slide. Sa hematology lab nyo, class, um, naturo na ba sa inyo yung blood smear or wala pa kayo sa blood smear? Wala pa, sir. Okay. Um, do you know the fixative used in your blood smear? Alam nyo? Does anyone know what's the fixative for your blood smear? No, sir. Ethanolman, sir. What? Is it ethanolman or is it water? It's methanol. It's methanol. So you, what you're gonna get do class is um you dry your blood smear then you dip it in methanol. Siguro mga five five dips yun and then it should fix. Kituro naman sa inyo yun. And then after your fixation class, so you've made the, ano na, let's proceed now to your bacterial smear preparation using liquid media. So when you say liquid media class, this would be the ones in, wait, pangit tube. Okay, liquid media. 
this would be the one in tubes liquid form now the first thing you need to do class would be to prepare your ppe your materials your equipment your waste disposal needed for the activity so you have your biosafety cabinet your ppe your inoculating loops and needles your bunsen burner your disposal bags, your media, so either solid or liquid, your slides, and your electrical heater. Then you're going to disinfect it and place the materials in the BSC. So again, when you're disinfecting class, follow the rule of cleanness, clean to dirty. So start from the glass sides, then the middle part. So prepare your slide by passing it over the flame. So the reason for that class, you want it to pass it over the flame is to avoid or to remove moisture and oil. So let's say um, yung, yung slides na gamit nyo is reuse, inugasan, nagtitipid yung hospital nyo. Your hospital is being cheap or your laboratory is being cheap. So you need to pass it through a flame to remove the moisture and the oil. Then you're going to make a margin on one side. So your margin would be like this, yes. Then you're going to label it. Question class, when labeling, what do you use for your labeling? What do you use for your labeling? Permanent marker, sir. Permanent marker, pwede. Paano pag frosted yung slide? Have you encountered yung frosted slide? So yung frosted slide would be, yes, this part would be the frosted. Naka-encounter na kayo ng frosted slide, di ba? So, kapag frosted slide, anong gagamitin nyo? Pencil. What? Pencil. 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 Very good. So, you would use pencil. Mag-ingat kayo, class, in the future sa mga markers nyo. If hindi kayo makahanap ng permanent marker, go for your pencil. Kung frosted yung slide. Pero kung katulad nito na regular, regular slide, try to find a permanent marker because the label could be wash out. Pag na-wash out yung label, hindi nyo ma-identify yung slide. Mamaya mamali nyo or ma-misidentify nyo. Then the margin here class would be um, your uh, measurement of the size of your your smear. So, wala namang specific size or specific ano. Just make a circle. And after that, you're going to shake or mix your organisms by resuspending them. So, you would do an inversion class. Igaganyan nyo. Then, avoid trying to moisten the cup. So, hindi ko alam bakit dito sa picture na to umabot siya sa cup. So, avoid, avoid doing that class kasi if you moisten the cup, the organisms would adhere, would adhere to the cup. And pag inopen yan, pwede kayong ma-infect. And you don't want that happening. Again, do not avoid, avoid um, moistening the cup to avoid the organisms adhering to it. And when you open it, you could get infected. So you would flame your inoculating loop. So someone asked earlier, how would you know if your flame or your inoculating loop is sterile when it is this hot? You can actually see it burning, well, not really burning, but red. That's when you know that your inoculating loop is um, ready or sterile. But if you're going to use an electrical heater, you would use 10 seconds to know that it's sterile. 
Any questions, class? Okay. All right. Now that you've um, in a uh, flame or uh, made your inoculating loop sterile or your needle, now holding the inoculating loop, you would remove now the cap and do not place it down flame the mouth of the tube. So if you notice class, this would be the cup. Parang inipit niya lang sa pinky niya and sa second finger. Pwede yan. While still holding the inoculating loop. So if you notice, walang, there was no placement of equipment or placement of materials used in the surface. That's how you do your aseptic technique. Uh, so after you open the cup, you would now flame the opening. After flaming, you're going to fish out a loop full of specimen. So just a loop full class. As in yung, uh, it's like the size of the inoculating loop itself. Then you're going to apply it on the slide. So this would be the slide. You place the loop full here. Then you're going to now um, disperse it following a circular motion starting from the inner area, inner to outer area. Like that. And remember, diba, you made a pattern kanina, dalawang bilog. So try to stay within that area. And try to avoid being it being too thick or being too thin. So after you've dispersed, you're going now to flame the mouth of the tube, then you cap it again. Then after that, you're going to flame your inoculating loop until it becomes right, bright red or 10 seconds in your automatic electrical heater. Then you're going to air dry the smears, then heat fix it in preparation for staining. Disinfect your work area. So start again from the cleanest to the dirtiest. Then dispose your waste properly. Any questions, class, in regards to your liquid uh, culture preparation, bacterial smear preparation, using liquid media? Okay, let's proceed now to your solid media. So again, you're just going to prepare your PPE, materials, and equipment. Disinfect. Then again, um, uh, prepare your slide by passing it over a plane, making a merge margin, and labeling it. But this time, class, you would be requiring your NSS, your normal saline solution. Now, in the previous one, wherein you would be using liquid media, so the sample was in a liquid form. But this time, you would be using solid media. So you would be using what we call colonies. Now, your colonies are not easily dispersed. So you would need NSS to help in dispersing that. So you would place a drop of sterile NSS. Then you now proceed to your aseptic technique. Flame the inoculating loop. Using the inoculating needle, fish a single isolating colony. Then place it on the NSS. Then disperse it. Then flame again. Then air dry your smears. Then heat fix it in preparation for staining. Disinfect and dispose your waste properly. So that ends our Module 3.